A smoking charred mess of vehicles piled up on I-70 on the west side of town this afternoon. Semi trucks, cars, trucks piled up and burning up, stopping I-70 at Colorado Mills Boulevard in Lakewood. The initial report from West Metro firefighters is that several people were injured. I-70 shut down in both directions in that area. Obviously, just stay clear. Did you see that smoke plume? It was a monster, a black tower over the west side of town that rose up just before five o'clock this afternoon when the semi trucks were were really going along with all of their fuel and their loads as well. And one by one, the cars that had collected perhaps in that first spilled load began to burn as well. That was quite the uh, quite the tower of smoke and a number of uh, explosions as you saw fuel tanks go earlier on today, but that is the current situation. Here's that earlier video for you as things were were really going. Now we know that obviously the first step is, is to rescue anybody who might have still been in those vehicles when the fire erupted. And at this point, West Metro just saying a few injuries is what we are hearing. One thing that we are waiting to learn is how long between the crash, the pile up and when the fire started, because when we got our first glimpse of it from Sky 9, there was just one semi going and then it spread back through the pile. We have Pamela Rollison from CDOT on the phone with us to talk about the situation that they're looking at. And uh, Pamela, what are we thinking in terms of a potential closure of that interstate through the metro area? Right now, we do have crews that are being dispatched to the scene, and what their role will be after firefighters get this under control is that we will clear the accident scene, but um, our major priority is always safety, so we want to make sure that uh, the bridge structure is in safe condition before we reopen that um, area of I-70 in the bridge to traffic. So we want to see if any damage was done from the fire, and so that's what we will be uh, focused on as well as cleanup efforts. Now, I recall that fire that we had back on I-25 down near the Tech Center a couple of years ago, and one of the issues that you had was just the logistical effort of getting in enough wreckers and enough flatbeds and everything else to get all of those vehicles out there. I, I recall the CDOT folks just kind of staging for hours, waiting for their chance to get in there. Do you know when you're going to be able to go in and make those assessments? Well, we are doing that right now. Um, from what we can see at this point, it looks like that there wasn't a, a, a major chemical source for the fire. With the 25 tanker fire, you're talking about oil, you're talking about a, a liquid-based sustainable um, type of event, which, which caused uh, a long-lasting fire, and that caused damage on I-25. We are not anticipating that with this situation, but we're going to make absolute Absolutely sure everything is okay before we reopen anything, but that could be a while. There's there's a lot of work to be done. Sure, Tamara, do you have any insight into how this got started? Just from a layperson's perspective, we saw that first semi with the spilled load, and you saw a number of cars that were kind of collected and partially buried in the load. Do we know how the initial crash happened? I wouldn't know that. I would say that your best source for that would be the uh, Colorado State Patrol. I think that they would have uh, the best sense of exactly what happened as uh, as they as they pull this uh, crash apart, if you will, to figure out exactly what caused it. All right, Tamara Rolson from CDOT, we appreciate your time and your expertise. So again, this is at I-70, right at Colorado Mills Boulevard. Fortunately, the smoke plume moved north, so it moved away from the mall. If you're familiar with that area, the smoke plume moved up towards uh, NREL, uh, the National Renewable Energy Lab, and the Martin Marietta headquarters there on the north side, and then up into some neighborhoods there. It did not go south uh, towards the mall. There, that gives you a good look there. North is on the right, south is on the left. Our Jordan Chavez is there talking to a lot of the folks who were in the area when this when this happened and a number of folks Jordan have have described uh, hearing a, a boom a loud explosion at one port, point that's exactly what the people standing next to me talked to and I want you to hear from them because it's pretty accurate from what we're hearing from many groups we have heard so this is Christy Dixon and her husband Brian and just like a lot of people they're going through out their day doing their normal things Christy was actually on her way home and Christy something that Kyle was talking to me about is that loud boom that a lot of people are describing yes yeah 
I was on the off road trying to get to the off ramp and just all you hear is this big huge boom and then the big black smoke just kind of went off all over and then you started hearing this popping noise and things blowing up is what you started hearing. What went through your mind of what potentially was going on? Scary. I can't tell you what went through my mind. It was just really, really scary that I don't know what happened, what it was really scary. Were you able to look around and see kind of the reaction from the other drivers on the road? Everybody was just trying to get off the road and then there was um, people that were up on the overpass at Denver West that were getting out of their cars and then somebody come and told them to get back in their cars and then there was, I could see people on the opposite side of the um, I-70 that were getting out of their cars and it was just really scary. Nobody really knew what was going on. So. Scary for your husband as well. I know you weren't in the area, but you were the one that got the call from Christy. What was that like? Yeah, it was very scary. Um, the first few words is something terrible just happened in front of me. And of course, everything goes through your mind. And so it took me a minute to get her calmed down enough to just find out she wasn't involved. And she was okay. And so I, kinda, I relaxed at that point, but it was, it was very tense for a few minutes. I want to ask you about something that you had talked to me about a little bit earlier, which was what you saw when you first pulled up. Right, because I was coming across the bridge and of course it was closed, so as you turned to go uh, west on I-70, you could see there was five or six cars and they were all just one giant ball of flames. And when you saw that, what did you feel? It was chaos. I mean, you start thinking, I wonder if how many people died and you start praying for the people that were involved mm -hmm. that are, you know, alive and families and you that's know scary. it's going to be a really bad situation. And that's actually kind of what we're hearing from a lot of people right now. They're waiting around. They want to make sure everyone out here is okay. Right. You just want to make sure everybody's okay. Is if they need anything? Is everybody okay? You know, there's still a lot of ambulances around and a lot of fire trucks still here. So just making sure everybody's okay. Yeah, still definitely a very big scene, Kyle, out here. We are going to try to talk to a lot more people, but uh, so far, very similar stories to what we're hearing from Christy and Brian. Jordan Chavez, thank you very much. Express our thanks to Christy and Brian as well. We're going to hear from Lakewood Police live in just a few minutes. But first, I want to talk with a woman named Brianna who was in an office building nearby, I believe. Brianna, can you kind of tell us where you were at the time that you first realized something was going on? Um, yeah, I was leaving work. So I work in, um, I work at New West Physicians. We're actually right on the corner. Um, I can see the ramp to get onto I-70 from my work. And I was just packing up my things, um, just getting ready to leave, and the whole building just shook. And you can hear, you you could hear like this huge boom. Um, and we didn't really know what it was. I I I'd assume it was an explosion just because of the boom. And um, we then were told to evacuate, and everybody had to get out. And I was walking to my car, and I had no idea what was going on. And I could just see all of these people running up the hill. Um, cars were trying to get off of the road, trying to get ambulances to come through, fire trucks, everything. And I turned the corner, and I could see just, like, th this huge black wall of smoke heading right towards my work. And I, I had no idea what it was. Um, so we... I was just standing there watching to see what it was, and you could just keep hearing all of these little explosions. And um, we actually saw this huge fireball um, just come up into the sky, and you just you were shaking. You had no words. It was it was scary. It, it sounds to me like what you heard then was perhaps uh, the fuel going up on the first semi and not the crash itself. Because, you know, a, a car crash sounds different than, than a boom. But you heard that boom, and by the time you laid eyes on it, the, the smoke was already in the air. Those people coming up the hill, uh, it sounds like those might have been some, some drivers, some folks trying to, trying to get off of, of the interstate. And, boy, what a scary situation that was. Brianne McGrath, thank you for your time. Glad that, that you and the folks that you work with are, are safe there. We are about to hear from Lakewood Police on this pileup and fire at I-70 and 
Colorado Mills Boulevard in the Lakewood area this afternoon. It has closed I-70 in both directions. There's no reason to even be over on that side of town. Just, just go sixth. Uh, and we're still sorting out the number of vehicles involved. We were counting cars when we got our first look at this from Sky 9. There was the initial semi, the one that appears to have dumped its load there. There were at least four what looked like passenger vehicles in that debris and then more semis behind. I think Let's we all have my name for police has to for say that. have to say about 450 this afternoon. Uh, we got several calls of a, a motor vehicle crash up on I 70 going uh, eastbound. Uh, in this section here, it's kind of a, you know, I-70, how we all know how it winds through, but it is through uh, going eastbound. A semi, we're still looking at what took place with the semi that, that kind of started. Brake failure, um, we're looking at some mechanical issues, and uh, what had happened is the vehicle came down, ended up colliding with slower traffic, causing a very big chain reaction crash that has uh, that also ignited and started a, a fire. Uh, at this point, there are several injuries. We do have at least one confirmed fatality, uh, but given that the scene is very active still, as, as we've seen here, uh, we, we can't say what the numbers are exactly, just given the, the unsafe part of the, the scene right now. So once that gets all taken care of, then we'll, uh, we'll certainly, uh, you know, get some some more accurate numbers and notifications and stuff like that. As of right now, we are looking at 12 cars and three semis that are involved. That number may change, uh, but that's the uh, the preliminary from uh, our folks at, on the scene and with the help of State Patrol and the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department. Those are the numbers that we're getting now. Do we know if the fatality was the, the truck driver or a another passenger vehicle uh, at that point we don't know quite yet who the the fatality is um, I, I know there were several people taking the hospitals and and given our distances and, and dealing with that we're still working on identifying who is where and when when all this took place and again what was inside that truck it seemed like it, it served as a, almost a, a combustible object uh, that I don't know I've heard the from conversation I've heard wood uh, that it was loaded with wood um, but I, I don't know that for sure. Do we know the, the time that passed between the semis coming down? Is it coming down a hill? Is that right? Yeah, if he's going eastbound, as, as we can see behind me, um, that direction eastbound where all the police cars and the fire trucks are all in the eastbound lanes. Okay. And so, yes, eastbound is what started. Okay, so trucks coming eastbound tra crashes into slower traffic. Correct. And then more cars are crashing behind or no? Um, it sounds like the truck or the semi drove into all of the cars. So everything took place out in front of it. Okay. And do we know how long before then the fire started and then the fire spread? No. It spread to other cars, right? Correct. That is correct. But I haven't heard a time frame of how long before the fire really ignited. Is, is the working theory that the other bus, school bus accident that shut down I-70 for a time may have played a role? Uh, that I don't know. I mean, 450, as we all know, traffic's pretty thick on I-70 as is, and I, I haven't heard anything about a previous crash down the road that, that would have caused any of this. Did the driver's truck at all get out? Uh, get out? Yeah, did he make it out alive? Or? Uh, I don't know. That's what we were just talking about. I don't know the exact of who was injured, Compared to the fatality part, we're still piecing all those together. What are they doing right now over there? Because I know it's on the other side of that bridge, right? Um, yeah, the, the, the main part of this investigation starts at the bridge and then goes east uh, from there. Right now, it's still just making the scene, the scene safe. Um, it's, it's more of an active fire right now than it is an accident investigation. Um, obviously, for, for the folks working, the first responders, it's a matter of being safe before we can get in there and really start putting together what took place and when. Do you guys have a loose head count on maybe how many people went to the hospital? I know you don't know everything. I, I don't at this point. Okay. I can't imagine that this is going to open anytime, anytime soon. No, this will be several hours that at least eastbound I-70 will be closed. And can you tell us about the bridge? We saw the flames coming up on the bridge. Is the bridge safe or is it being inspected? Um, I, I can guarantee CDOT, uh, Department of Transportation, is looking at that. I've seen their vehicles around, so yes, I'm sure that's being evaluated uh, before we go any further there. Can you talk about the emergency response? I mean, it seems like folks from all over are here. Who, who, who exactly responded to the, the smoke? Is it? Is well, it shut up? Uh, West Metro Fire, obviously for the fire part of it, we have State Patrol, we have Jefferson County Sheriff's Department, we have City of Lakewood, Lakewood Police Department. Um, 
I don't know if Golden PD is here. Their boundaries are real close to this. But, uh, and with, with uh, CDOT responding, so there was a very active response. Given this stretch of I-70 really comes in and out of jurisdictions, at some points it's state patrols, at some point it's Lakewood, then we get into Wheat Ridge farther north, and then Arvada, and, we all, and, and from there. So that's the reason for the big response. One, because it's a very serious accident. Uh, two, because of the location, it gets a response from all of us so we can continue with the investigation that way. Will you hold another one of these tonight? Yes, as we get updates, we'll, uh, we'll start doing more um, updates that way. Right now, this is very basic in the start of the investigation. Um, so there's a long ways to go with this. And is the fire out now? Uh, I have not been told yes or no to that. Um, I haven't talked to anybody from West Metro yet. And it just seems like a lot of people, even bystanders, helped. It's, we've been talking a lot of eyewitnesses. What an absolute nightmare. A stretch of road that all of us have driven. I-70 uh, I eastbound through Lakewood there, and it sounds like a semi coming down the hill had brake failure or some other mechanical issues in plowed into slow or stop traffic. That then sparked the fire. The vehicles piled up behind at least 12 cars and three semis, and Lakewood police telling us for the first time that at least one person lost their life in this crash and fire today. Several more people went to the hospital. We will continue to keep tabs on this situation, keep you updated on the efforts to get that road and bridge inspected and back open when next continues.